morning. Welcome to 7 for 7. Today is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Let's go to the throne. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just praise you. We magnify you, Lord. We we ask, God, that you would take control. We ask, God, that you would lead, guide, and direct us. Heavenly Father, we take our hands off and we put you in the pilot seat, Heavenly Father, that we might glorify you in all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Mark eleven twenty two. It is a scripture that is very short and succinct, but it is a very powerful scripture. It is a scripture that impacts your entire being, right? It says, have faith in God. But yet, 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 yet in our lifetime, there are storms that come upon, come upon us. And when these storms come upon us, they challenge us because we're to have faith in God, right? And we have faith in God, but, and, and we need to know that without faith, it is impossible to please God, right? But there are, there are few people who really choose to live by faith. They choose more likely to live on the safe side, right? Jesus told his disciples to have faith in God because why did he say that? Because they didn't have faith. He could see that they did not have faith, that they did not live according to the plan that he was giving. And so you need to understand that there are three types of storms that all Christians at one time or another will face. How you respond to the storm is different, but all of us will face these types of storms, right? And so we need to know, if you will, that it's not just that we have faith to get saved, but do you have faith to live? <clears throat> And I'm challenging you because, because these storms come to rock your boat. The devil brings storms to cause you to doubt. God allows the storm so that your faith can be released. It's like this. Sometimes there's a breaking, and when there's a breaking, then it can release that that's on the inside. It can release your faith. Amen? God wants our faith to be released. Amen. In Mark 4, 40, it's Jesus said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? And Jesus was said, why did he say, do you still have no faith? Because he knew this. He knew that he had lived before them. He knew that he had given them the word. He knew that he had given them everything they needed to be able to live a life of faith. But when the storm came, their faith left them. See, that's like many of us today. We have faith. But if we're not careful, when the storm comes, you know, we, we begin to question. Amen? So, so, so earlier in this verse, or this pericope, it says, that day when the evening came, he said to his disciples, let's go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. And there were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern asleep, right? So, so they had Jesus, right? They had Jesus, they were with Jesus, but, but they forgot the word that Jesus said. He said, let us go to what? The other side. But the storm came, and because the storm came, and they relied upon what? Their past experience. Their past experience says when the storm of that magnitude comes, we need to get off the water. And if we get caught in the water, it's going to cause us to possibly perish because we're going to, uh, the, the boat's going to sink. They forgot the word. They forgot what Jesus said. They forgot what he had just said, but they also forgot the testimony of their life with him. How many times have you had a word from God? And when the storm or storms come, 
it makes you doubt that you heard from God. Storms come. The devil brings storms to make you doubt your present and your future. And if you're not careful, it'll make you question your past. But your past should be your testimony. Your testimony should be that so much like the breakfast of champions, your, your breakfast should be that um, you, you come to the revelation that you realize that you overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of his testimony, first and foremost, because he said so. Secondly, because he's already demonstrated the victory in your life. You got to let God be glorified. The devil brings storms for what? To create doubt, to create space, space between you and the Lord. It's like a basketball player coming down the court, right? And when they get ready to shoot, when they're getting when, when they're getting ready to, to, to release, if you will, the, 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 the shot, release the ball, they need to, they want to create space between them and their adversary. See, we need to understand because up until then there can be there can be some contact, you know, bumping up against one another backing them down, you know what I mean? And you need to understand because many of you are, are are in some contact. You say basketball is not a contact sport, but but if you but if you watch it, you know, sometimes you you you're, you're coming down court and there's some contact, right? And you're just trying to back them down, back them down, back them down and you're to the place that you know you need to shoot. And when you know that you need to shoot, guess what? They're to the place that they know they need to stop you from shooting. They need to cause you to have doubt. They need to cause you to believe that they're going to block or, or, or they're going to do something that you're going to shoot and not make it. But you have to do what? Have faith. And so good basketball players learn to create space. They use their body. They use their, their past experience to create space. They use their hands, they use their feet, they do whatever they can to create space. And when they get space, sometimes it's just a little bit of space, they shoot. Oh. Right? That's what it is. The devil wants to body you up. He wants to rough you up. He wants to make you feel that you are going to miss the shot. And God is saying, have faith. God is saying, have faith. See, the storms come to cause you to what? To doubt Jesus and his word. And Jesus is saying, how is it that you have no faith? People in the world today, they have faith in the government. Faith in employment. Faith in sports teams. And then there's some people that got no faith in nothing, but, 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 but they put their faith in people. You can't even put your faith in people. You got to have faith, what? In God. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. One more scripture and I'm done. And tomorrow we'll prayerfully talk about the storms, the three different storms that, that, that we as believers face. Amen. Luke 8, 25. And when he said, where is your faith? He asked his disciples in fear and amazement. They asked one another, who is this man? Right? So I'm telling you, have faith in God. Because without faith, it's impossible. But the doubt that the devil brings will make you not even recognize the one that you loved, the one that has saved you, the one that's walked with you. Have faith in God. I'll see you next time. It's 7 for 7. Be blessed.